Hey everybody, today our family is celebrating our father's 100th birthday. Sadly he died back in 1979, but we thought we'd put this video together to celebrate his birthday back in 5th of August 1921. Few photos and a bit of talking about things that happened. This morning we went for a walk and the drop there was into a creek about eight or ten foot down. Aileen was not keen about walking across that down. I'll let her carry on. This rain outside, it seems that uh, crickets, cockroaches, giants and things are coming in. They're chasing your mother all around the place. So she's running around walking about trying to stamp on them. <laughs> Dad, as I remember him, always seemed to me to be a strong person, despite uh, having suffered malaria when he was serving in the Army Medical Corps. He never really said much about his life in the war. And, of course, when I say he didn't say much, he had a speech impediment. He could sing very well. But I do have one memory that's very strong. He was very interested in Aborigines. He was very interested in the native people in Papua New Guinea. I think the main reason why he was so keen to go back there to work with the Baptist Mission. And I have this memory of coming away from a meeting at uh, Spring Street. I must have been very young, in which there was talk about South Africa. And there was probably talk about uh, Aboriginal missions as well. The thing that always stuck in my mind is that as we left and he was driving me up, he said to me, you know, when you're comparing two systems you have to compare the best of one with the best of the other and the worst of one with the worst of the other. I guess I didn't fully understand what he was saying at the time but given what I now know was his interest in those kinds of issues I kind of wonder what he would make of developments since then. So I think in some ways he was a wise man, although he didn't have a lot to say. And the sad thing is that we became quite good friends after his return from New Guinea, but he didn't have a lot of time left before he passed away. They were great times. Dad, Aunty Kari, Uncle Bill. We used to milk the cows, collect the eggs from the chickens. We used to make our own butter. We'd get an empty jar, put a marble in it, put the fresh milk in it and shake it all up and then we'd have nice fresh creamy butter and we'd spread it on the bread that Aunty Corrie used to make. Nobody was allowed to pack the caravan except for Dad. Everything had to be in the right place, the right size, all the clothes together, all the toys together, all the tin food together. The ice chest had to be put in a particular spot to make sure the caravan was properly balanced. Dad always loved his nature walk, walking along the pebbles in the streams. They were great times together. The photos I have of me and Dad seem to have us on holidays and looking into the distance. 
that's possibly a bit of a reflection of our relationship. It was a little bit distant, but on those holidays we had a really good time. I remember visiting lots of different places around Victoria. And on those times, Dad taught us how to shoot a gun, to shoot rabbits, to go fishing and driving around and seeing lots of different sights. I remember especially looking up on at Mount Hotham at the distance. I could not believe it. And the depths of the canyons below us, fearing for my life as we drove up those steep, windy roads. We had some great times. I've been amazed at how courageous your mother's becoming. You should see the way she kills spiders and great huge insects with her shoes. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's a marvel, she really not, is. Not this afternoon when I was going through the tin stuff, I came across this huge spider and I said to your father, it's six inches across. When he had a look, it was about four, I think, but never mind. <laughs> a large huntsman spider. I told her it wouldn't hurt her at all. It's the one that cleans up the insects and the cockroaches and all the rest of it. So I said, well, that's one of your friends. You want to look after him, but still she was not happy until we got rid of him. He was in a box under my bed, and I'm not going to sleep with that under my bed, thank you. Goodbye for now. Goodbye.